everyone. We're back again. I apologise. If you saw this morning's live, I just want to start by apologising. Uh, I should have known better and not had a child here while I was trying to do it. But anyway, we're here now. I've actually moved positions. I've just spun us and I'm hoping the sun looks a bit better in this position. So hopefully this is easier to see what we're doing. All right, so I'm going to start again like this morning didn't happen. And uh, let's see how we go. We've, we barely did anything this morning, so I'll show you what I did anyway. Uh, but we're going to pretend this morning never happened, so we're going to start again. Uh, for those of you watching on YouTube, you will have never seen that. So welcome, thank you, hit the subscribe button. Okay, so this is where we're at. So our beautiful sideboard, let me flip you around for a second and give you a little look at where we're at. So yesterday, we finished this piece. Um, and like I was about 99% happy with it. There was a couple of sections, mainly on this side, uh, where we sort of raced through it. So I have blended that a little bit more. The biggest thing I have done is add more of this um, brown and the orange, orangey yellow. I think it's a yellow okra and burnt sienna in the Montmartre range. So I've just added some more of that. Just as, mainly as a highlight, but see how it looks like rust? It's a really, really easy way to add that look without using a product that creates rust like Pure Eco's Rust Finish. So, this is where we're at. I am so in love with this. Even my husband walked in and said, wow, and he never says that. So, I'm, um, I'm a bit chuffed with myself, to be honest. So, we're looking gorgeous. Looking like, so let me stand back, how pretty she is. My husband's gone to Bunnings right now to get the back and the shelves so I can uh, finish this off and hopefully get it listed later today as well, which is exciting. All right, so, oops, wrong button, sorry. Let me spin you around. So, today we are adding our glaze. So, this is like the finishing touches. This is, like, I love the painting. I love what we've already done. I love that process. But this, seeing it now and knowing that, Doing what we're about to do is just gonna lift it and it's gonna really, really finish it. I love, love, love this part. These little finishing, finicky touches. This is what I live for. So, we're gonna add some glaze and we're going to do a little bit of distressing, but it's a little bit different than just your normal sandpaper scruffing it up, um, which I'm excited to show you. I've done it many, many times. I absolutely love doing it. Uh, it's a really fun way to get some really fun texture. So I'm excited to show you that in a minute, but we're going to start with our glaze first. So if you did catch this morning's very brief live, I've already put some on these doors, but we're just going to pretend so far that I haven't done anything at all. So glaze, the product that we are using is Pure Eco's Stain and Glaze. You guys have seen me use this possibly hundreds of times before. I use it on all, my, all of my timber as a stain. I have shown it a couple of times as a glaze, but not as many times. So, uh, this is Stain and Glaze. It is a water-based product. It's absolutely beautiful to use. It has got a built-in top coat. It is an ultra matte finish. I normally, when I'm putting it on timber, I seal it with a hemp oil or I seal it with um, a wax. On this, I don't know. I'll see how I'm going. I'm thinking just a matte sealer. Possibly just for a little bit of extra protection, but remembering I have used 99% of silk finish on this. There is a little bit of chalk paint on there, which is porous and needs to be sealed. But this is mainly silk finish, so uh, it doesn't. Pro it probably doesn't need to be sealed. I probably will anyway, just for the protection. But we'll see how we're going. See what kind of mood I'm in. So this is stain and glaze. As you can see, we've got quite a few beautiful colours. Um, these are on timber. This is just on a yellow pine. So we've got all these different colours. Today we are working with these darker two. So this one is sable. It's a dark chocolate brown. And then we've got midnight, which is a black. Um, we could, of course, come in with the white, etc. Or any of these other colours, really. These also come in like actual colours. There's a red, there's a purple, there's a blue. There's a pink. I think the pink's discontinued. But there's a red, purple and blue. Is there like an aqua colour? Yes, there's like a mermaidy aqua. Actually, I think it's called mermaid, um, an aqua colour as well. So you could come in with any of those. But today, we're going grungy and we're going dark. So we're going to go in with sable. 
and midnight. As you can see down here, this is what the glaze does over paint. So you can see how nice this is. So this is going over uh, chalk paint on these. This one here, this is the sable. So, and this is what we're looking for. We wanna be highlighting detail today. Um, I want to darken a few areas, just that little bit more, and that's what we're trying to achieve. So, I'm, and we've already added some to this, but I'm specifically looking to highlight our detail a little bit more, add a bit more depth and dimension. I'm looking to add some more dark across our base. Anywhere where it's a little bit dark already, I want to just emphasise that a little bit. I'm not putting glaze absolutely everywhere. I'm not gonna smother it in it. I just want little bits here and there. Um, and that's, I think that's the beauty of glaze as well, that you can be really, um, really specific about where, where you want things to, like, you don't have to put it everywhere. So I've already got my little jar here. I am using Sable. These now come in a 250 ml jar. These are the 200s. Mine does not have a label other than the words. Um, and my brush, and I'm choosing to use a brush for this, is a 50 mil. And I'm using a brush because I want to get into all of my detail. Okay, I don't want it just sitting on the surface. So, now I've already sort of done that door. We might come back to it and do a bit more. But let's come over to this door. So I'm going to bring you in a little bit closer so you can see what we're doing. Come on, son, behave yourself. All right, so I'm not putting it everywhere. I've got a couple of patches that are already a little bit darker, so we're going to start in there. And I'm just going to sort of pop it on. I do know that I want a little bit more up here. And I do know that I want a little bit in there as well. Then you're going to grab yourself a cloth. Uh, my cloth is slightly damp. I do prefer a damp cloth. If this is drying too fast, you can wet it and reactivate it a little bit. And then all you're gonna do is very gently wipe off that excess. And I like to sort of wipe it across the surface a little bit, just so it doesn't look too patchy. And it sort of just blends it out a little bit too. You can do this as well as you're painting if you like and work it in with your wet paint. Um, obviously our paint's already dry. We did this yesterday. I apologize for that drilling behind us. I don't know what they are doing, but it has not stopped since I got here at about 9.30. It's driving me nuts. I apologize if you can also hear it. Um, I don't know what they're doing. It's in the storage units behind us too, so I, I, I don't know. They're worse than the concrete place today. So you can see it's just added a bit more depth. And then I've just got some of my cloth and I'm just gonna sort of wipe that around a little bit as well. I'm gonna dip in. Now we're starting with the sable, which is our chocolate brown. If I'm still wanting a bit more depth, then we'll come in with the black as well. I'm going to get it up into all of this. Again, I'm not putting this everywhere. I'm wanting to highlight some of the detail. Obviously, we've got a lot of the um, texture on here as well, and this is a great way to sort of sit it in there. And this is also why I'm just sort of blotching it a little bit rather than really, really rubbing it so that I don't remove it all. Make sure you take a step, step back every now and then just to have a little looky-see. Some areas I'm going to rub it a little bit just to sort of spread it out. You can see it's just added that little bit in there. like so it is really really subtle on a dark piece like this it is a lot harder to see and if you decide you don't like it you can um, either really wet it and then wipe it off or just paint over the top as well because it's all water based you don't have any issues with just wiping over the top I'm just sort of using what's on my brush at the moment I'm just gonna bring that up and then I'm gonna wipe off some of that extra and then of course there's some of my cloth as well, so I can sort of really spread that around a bit as well. Looking really, really nice. We're gonna add some up here on this other corner. 
So you can see I'm not putting it everywhere. And I think that's the beauty of a product like this. If you do go really, really subtle with it, it, uh, it can really, really, really work in your favour too. And I think we're going to bring in a bit of the black up here as well. I want that a little bit darker, so let me grab my black. The black is called Midnight. It is absolutely gorgeous. So we're nice and dark. Again, I'm only getting a little tiny bit on my brush. I really don't want much at all. And the black is very, very dark. And this is similar to a wax as well, for those wondering. Now, I'm my piece has been painted with silk finish as well. And I just wanted to note that because it's silk finish, silk finish has a built-in top coat, your wax can only soak in so far, okay? It's not, it's sort of just gonna sit on the surface. Whereas if this was all chalk finish, it would be soaking in significantly more. A little bit down there. I want a little bit down here around this keyhole, even though the keyhole's mostly going to be covered. Um, I just want a little bit more and I'm actually going to pop it into that keyhole a little bit. I need to pick a new handle for this one. And I'm just going to shove the end of my cloth in there a little bit. Just sort of darkens it. So I'm just going to step back a moment, have a look. We're going to come up this other side, up here. And I want a little bit more depth up here as well. I'm just going to brush it over the top and then I'm going to sponge it off a little bit and then I'll wipe somewhat too. And we just... Sponging it off, wiping it as we need to. Beautiful. So now let me bring you back a bit more. This is where we're at. Um, I really want this base to have a bit more depth. I'm going to start with the sable, which is our brow, and then we're going to come in with our black. So just in a few bits, and I'm sort of just going to... I want a bit more along this, along that join. I'm going to come in with my cloth again. And we're just going to, I'm going to wipe, I think. Just rotating my cloth because it does get a little bit on there and I don't want it sort of spreading all over the piece. And then I'm going to sort of sponge it a little bit and wipe. You sort of just play around with it and get that finish that you're after. Like so. And you can see how that's just dark with it just a little bit. And it is really, really subtle. It's not a massive difference from where it was a moment ago but it's just enough to add a little bit of depth. Like so. All right, let's go with this other side. Again, I want this area darker again, so I'm gonna come in with our midnight. Like so. Sponge it. I'm going to bring it up the side a little bit, just a little bit, and I'm going to rotate my sponge. Just going to add a little bit more. 
come down the bottom. Quick long inhale. Really darken that lip there. And then I'm just going to watch it like that. Let's add a bit more up here as well. So this is still the midnight at the moment. So I've already got some of the sable on this door. I just want to add a little bit more depth to there. Over the top. I'm going to come up here on our um, drawer. I'm going to grab some of our sable instead first. Really, really beautiful. I'm so in love with this piece. I think it's gorgeous. So I'm just gonna spread it through there a little bit. So I'm not going for too much here. I don't want so much on there. So that it sort of just pulls away from it. Beautiful. So you can see it's just out of that little bit more depth and just helps lift that detail a little bit. I'm going to have a little bit of our black. I'm going to put it along the bottom of this leaf here, which has actually got some um, white, well not white, it's got that really pale green. And we're just going to wipe over the top. And it's just going to wet off a little bit and just remove that excess that's on top of the leaf. I just want it in that joint. And again, I'm going to do the same down here. I'm going to take my black again. And what I do to one side, I don't have to do the other either. We can just do it on one section. And it, I'm just going to wipe over the very top. I'm not getting into that joint with my cloth. I'm just using my finger in my cloth to wipe over like so. What are we thinking? I'm thinking that's pretty good. I'm really happy with that where, where we're at there. Just having a look, making sure. I feel like I want a little bit more depth down here at the bottom. So again, I'm gonna come in with the black again. with my brush and then oops I'm gonna blotch it with my cloth as well and then very gently sort of rub it a little bit too so blotching it's just sort of keeping it there but removing some of the excess whereas the rubbing is really spreading it out and removing it and because of, we've got all that really nice texture underneath it's bringing some of that out and it's giving us some more depth. So, let's come around the side. Now, hopefully I can get you, oh yeah, that's not too bad. Try and position you fairly well. Let me grab our things again. All right, so I've got quite a lot of depth going down here. I think I really, really want to darken that. So I'm going to go in with my Midnight first, which is that black. I'm going to bring it across the top. I'm going to wheel it down that join. And I think my plan is to bring it most of the way. 
all the way down and then I'm going to grab a nice fresh section of my cloth. I'm going to spread that out. A little bit of rubbing, a little bit of wiping. Uh, sorry, a little bit of rubbing, a little bit of splotching. You can see it sort of picks up all that excess. Just keep rotating your cloth. I'm going to really, really wipe it off the top of that bit of texture just there. And I'm going to do the same up here a little bit too because I want that yellow to pop through. Same down here. And I'm going to spray over that as well. If it starts to dry a bit too much and it's just not really moving how you want it to move. You can spray it as well. And I love these brushes because like you can control how much comes out. Sorry, not brushes, spray bottles. These are brilliant for something like this where you just want a little bit here and there. I'm gonna come in with some of our sable, which is our dark chocolate. I wanna bring some over here. And I wanna bring some up through here as well and some up through here. Goodness, that was a big bird. And then I'm just gonna wipe this bit. I don't want too much left. And I'm just gonna sort of wipe it like that. And wipe some of that off too. So it's really, really subtle what it's left behind. It's very minor what it's left, but it's just enough. I'm gonna bring some of the sable and then I'm gonna come in with that black right down the very bottom corner. There is a massive crow on our roof. Can you hear that? Oh no, there's two crows on our roof. So just gonna wipe it like so. So it's there, but it's not there, it's quite minimal. I want really wanna bring more down here. Like so, and then I'm really gonna wipe that as well through there. I don't want too much left behind. I just want a little bit. Beautiful, nice and easy. Right, let's go down the other end. We're doing so well. So this is like, and it doesn't take long. Um, oh, sorry, you caught on everything. Glaze doesn't take long, but it's so effective. Um, it really, it's, it's such an easy thing to do. It doesn't take long at all, but it really, really makes a difference. And it just lifts it that little bit. This end is my favorite end. I always have a favorite side. And this is my favorite. Uh, so I'm going to come in with some of my sable first. I want to bring it through here. I'm going to sort of bring it down a little bit. I'm just doing a little bit and then I'm going to spread it out with my cloth. I'm also, oops, pick it up, spritz over it. Rotate my cloth again, find a fairly clean section. So you can still see it, it's still dip out of that depth, but it's not in your face. A little bit more of our sable up here. We've got quite a lot of texture just there. So again, I'm just gonna, just a little bit, and then I'm going to wipe it and remove some of that excess. I wanna bring some of my black up the very top. And bring it down. I'm gonna bring it through this light bit a little bit too. Just what's on my cloth is what I'm bringing. Now, through this bit here, the other side I added quite a lot of black. I'm actually just gonna do a bit of brown on this bit. I'm not gonna do it all the way along either. I just want a little bit along there. Like so. Now, our base, again, I want it quite dark. I'm gonna start with our black down in this corner. I'm going to bring it up the side a little bit. I'm going to make sure that what I'm sort of doing to the side, I've done to the front as well. Same as when we are doing our paint. Just for that consistency. And then I'm just going to wipe. Oops. So, remembering to rotate your cloth. 
that sort of stuff there now. So I'm just going to spritz my cloth and wipe that off. There we go. I'm just watch, just watch on my cloth. I'm just bringing it around the front a little bit. Just making sure we're nice and consistent. Like so. I think this side really doesn't need much else. I think I might put a little bit through here. And I'm just going to use warts on my cloth. I think we'll come up into that light bit a little bit. And again, I'm going to find the cleanest part of my cloth. I'm actually going to wet it just a touch. And then sponge that push that in and then sort of start I'm like putting it down and twisting so it's still sponging it but it's starting to remove it just a little bit and we'll move some of that excess so spray my cloth again I just want a little bit more of that off there And the glaze can, like, until it starts curing, I can still go back to, like, somewhere that I did half an hour ago and still add some water and move it around. So it does keep, it does keep fairly active. Beautiful. I'm so happy with that. I'm really, really, really chuffed with it. It's just beautiful. So, I'm going to come around here. Now, I'm only going to do a little bit of this, but, um... I just, more than anything, I want to show you this, but I also, I just want a little bit, it just needs a little bit more. Uh, you can go crazy and get too, too many things happening, but I just want a little bit more. So we've got a lot of texture, but I want this to look like it's a little bit worn. So we're going to come down here to the base. We've got a heat gun here, and I'm going to grab my scraper in two seconds. Okay. So what we're going to do, down here on the base, I want my base more than anything to look that little bit more worn. So you're going to grab yourself a flame or a heat gun. Uh, this one is an Ozito. I've had it for years. It's brilliant. Um, I think I might have stolen it from my dad's shed actually. <laughs> um, you want some sort of flame or heat, quite high heat. Uh, I have done this with a blowtorch in the past. It works exactly the same. But this is very similar to what you would do if you were to strip a piece of furniture with heat. Uh, adding heat makes the paint bubble, and we want those bubbles, because this is how you add that extra bit of texture. So you're gonna make sure you're on high. Don't go so high that you're burning the piece, but you do wanna make sure it's nice and high. I like this one because it is adjustable. Uh, obviously it gets really hot, so make sure you're not touching anywhere that you shouldn't. Uh, make sure everything's on firmly before you start it. And then all we're going to do is I'm going to sit here, and it doesn't take long to get hot, but we're going to sit here. I'm sorry, guys. I just realized my mic was turned off, and I don't know why. I'm so sorry about that. I don't know why it turned off. We just going to sit here for a minute, and it takes a second. But if you watch it really, really carefully, it will start to bubble. And it creates a really, really, really fun texture. And then take a scraper. So I've got like a glass scraper here, or you can take your uh, like carbide scraper. Wait for it to cool down. Give it a second. Let those bubbles sit. And then I'll bring you in closer actually while we're waiting for it to cool. Let me drop you down. We're gonna do it up on the door a little bit too. I don't know how well you can see. I'm hoping you can. You just wait for it to cool a little bit. If you try and peel it while it's really, really bubbled, it won't work as well. Now we've got basin blocker underneath this. What we just really, really gently go and cross. So those bubbles, I'm not putting any pressure. Those bubbles are what's coming off. So we're just seeing what's underneath and it's just adding that 
little tiny bit. And I'm not gonna do it all over, I just want a little bit. Let's so come over here. I wanna do some up here on this door section, so let me bring you up. Again, pick it up. I hold it fairly close. Keep really close eye on it. It's just starting to bubble. We're going to, I'll start with this middle bit. We're just really gently going to scrape down. And I'm gonna grab this one as well. Sometimes you can just sort of rub them off with your fingers. This one, we've got some bigger bubbles. I don't know how well the camera, oh no, the camera's showing it. So we've got a couple of bigger ones there. And I'm gonna grab this one. You gotta wait for that paint to cool down a little bit. If you try and do it while it's still hot, you'll actually start peeling the paint off, which we don't want to do. We just want it to bubble so that we've got that texture so that we can then scrape or sand over it. Um, I prefer to scrape. It only takes a moment to cool down. Oh, then, can you see how we get some coming through? You can even run your finger over it. And we're just doing a little bit here and there. Really, really, really subtle. I'm gonna come up here and do a little bit there. And down here, and it's actually liking my fingers, so I'm just gonna keep doing that for a minute. It's just a fun way to add some extra texture. Obviously, I put the base and blocker underneath, so that is what you're seeing. And you don't want a lot, but it's really, really subtle, and it's a really fun way to add that detail. Um, do I want some anywhere else? I just want it in like a few, few spots. I don't think I want too much because obviously we have got a lot going on. I really like that. I think what we're going to do, we're going to come down here though. This is a little bit too white for me. So then what we're going to do, I'm going to come in with my glaze. Just what's on my brush. I'm going to brush that over some of it. Not all of it. I don't want a little bit. But it's just a little bit too much. In with our glaze, which goes over the top quite nicely. So we've still got that texture there, but it's just hidden a little bit of it. These ones up here are okay. I don't I feel like we're done. I don't want to add too much more to this, but I did want to show that to you. Oh, sorry, you can't see what I'm doing. All right. I'm so happy with this case. So let me bring you out. And turn you around. Let's have a look. So here she is. She's looking really, really pretty. So can you see how the glaze has just darkened it a little bit? I feel like just here might be a little bit darker than what I want it to go. So I might even brush just a little bit of my lighter paint over it. But you can, you can paint straight over the top because it's all water-based. You can do whatever you like. On this side. 
So this afternoon, I'm going to pull it down in a minute. I'm going to sand the drawers. Sorry, sand the top. Uh, the top's all still original. So I'm going to sand that. Uh, my husband's gone to Bunnings to grab the back and the shelves for inside because it's all still naked inside. So we're going to do that. But it's pretty much done. And I think that's all I've got to show you for this one. So I'll be listing this later today or tomorrow. I don't think it's going to happen today. Probably tomorrow, I'd say. Okay. There we are. We are all done. I'm so, so happy with her. Um... I think it's beautiful. So thank you all so much for joining me for this little mini series again. Um, I really love that you guys are joining in and the feedback I've been getting from these is fantastic and that you're enjoying me doing like the step-by-step -step video. So I'll keep doing these. Um, if there's anything you'd like to see or see a closer video of or anything like that, please sing out. Um, I'll do some more videos on the glaze as well for you all. It's all over my hands now. Uh, but I think that's it. Have a lovely day. Have a lovely afternoon. <coughs> and um, next week we're starting a bedroom set. We have to start it next week. So I will, um, I, sorry, the guy on the digger just waved to me. It's <laughs> throwing me out. Um, next week we're starting a bedroom set and that's back to just straight painting and timber finish. Uh, but we're doing a dark timber finish too, which is fun. And uh, we're doing carbon for the body, which is uh, Pure Eco's black, which is gorgeous. One of my favorite colors uh, in the range um that's it thank you all so much for joining me this beautiful dress so keep an eye out i'll do lots of little videos staging this one and um finishing it up so i've just got to do the top uh i'll do a dark stain on it i think i might i might just do a time lapse for that one uh i'll see how i'm going and we'll go from there thank you all for joining me have an absolutely wonderful day and i will see you next time